Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name is Bobby Waldron and welcome to another inbox review video which is going to be of the Ming Models 135th scale Russian ZSU-23 for Shilka, the self-propelled anti-aircraft gun. Um, I really do like Ming, they do do produce some really nice um, armoured scale models. Nice bit of box art but let's just jump straight in and take a look. Now there is a lot of sprues in this kit, you do get a lot for your money um, but I'll um, just jump through the most interesting bits so uh, first off we'll jump into the tracks and a bit of um, clear plastic parts now the tracks are quite interesting um, something I haven't seen before in a kit um, as you can see the track links are all pretty much the same they are you know they've got nice sort of detail in there you know nice sharp and crisp Right, not seeing any flash actually on these, which is rather, rather good, because when it comes to tracks, you do want to really, I mean, because it's so tedious, you want to just be able to cut it off, you know, trim up where you've cut it off, and not really be playing around getting rid of flash around the, I don't know, almost a 200 track link. So it is good just um, that they are good in that sense as well. And you'll see in, later on in the instructions how um, they are literally just like a snap fit thing going on there. It doesn't look like there's little glue required. You're snapping together and they go all flowy. Um, looks cool. I haven't seen that before, which should be quite interesting. You've got four of them. We then have some clear parts, which, you know, not much to write home about, but at least we're, we're seeing a nice amount of clear parts, and they are nicely packaged as well. I do like it when they add this little extra bit of a cover to it, just stops any sort of scratching. Um, interestingly, we have like a display panel here, which is rather cool because this kit does have some nice internals on it. Um, just to sort of remind you as well, this kit is around about 45 to 50 pounds RRP-ish, it's somewhere around about there. Not a bad price. It was new tooled in 2016, so a fairly new tool as well. Uh, moving along to some road wheels and that kind of stuff, uh, as you can see, again, you know, looking just nice and crisp and you know we've got nice detail raised bolts and all sorts of goodies going on there the ejector pin marks on the opposite side you do find this a lot with Ming they don't put ejector pin marks in bad places but their ejector pin marks um, they look bad they look bad than what they really am I mean there's no real problem just chopping off these big massive ejector pin marks that are protruding um, they look bad, but you know, if they just cut off, it's no real big deal with them. We've got two lots of them sprue. Then we've got the bottom hole just here. Looks a bit plain on the outside, but there is a lot of detail to sort of go on there. However, on the underside, they put bags and bags of detail on the underside, uh, which, you know, not a big deal to me because, you know, I don't like putting my models upside down, but, you know, the detail is there. Uh, we've got some of these, which is normally so the road wheels can actually sort of turn, you don't glue them into place. Looking at some top hull detail, it is looking a little bit plain, but I do believe, I mean, do correct me if I'm wrong, that the, the shilkers don't have a texture on them, they are quite smooth. Uh, I'm not 100% sure about that, but um, as you can see, you'll see from this kit, you haven't got any of that kind of like check textured surface or anti-slip stuff but it does have the detail where it's supposed to be. Um, and again, oh, and here we go, we've got some internal detail. This is one cool thing is, we do have internal detail for the driver's bay. And as you can see, we've got a nice seat here, which is actually looking rather, rather detailed. We are seeing the cushions and the fabric texture in there, looking good and a few bits of internal detail, which should, you know, if you want to, you could go down that route of open up the driver's hatch and showing off all that detail. Um, again, ejector pin marks, as you can see, big nasty things sticking out, look more scary than they am. Um, moving along, <coughs> we have some of our turret detail. Again, it does look, you know, it does look very sort of smooth and like there's no detail going on this. But again, I'm, I'm assuming that's because there is no texture detail on this and, you know, we're going to have all loads and loads of bits that are just going to be piled on top of it and the detail is going to come that way. But where you can kind of see detail, like here, I mean, 
you know we do have loads of this nice sort of raised bolts um, recessed panels where it's sort of needed and due um, it does look really sort of nice and neat and crisp so nice detail we've even got another internal detail area as well on this kit this is like the ammunition compartment and everything for those big uh, what is it the ZSU 24 four guns or something uh so 23 not 24 um and yeah all looking rather rather good there moving along with some more of the build as you can see we've got the top part of the the whole section here again we've already seen the kind of detail that's going on with this and some side skirts uh, i'm kind of going to just kind of jump through and just sort of quickly show you the sprues here because um, I don't want to get everything out and sort of show you everything. You've kind of seen the quality of the kit and you should get a good idea from that. But, you know, we've got loads of these sprues which have loads and loads of detail. We've got the, the 23s, uh, ZU 23s uh, weapons on there, the auto cannons, shovels, that kind of stuff, turret ring. Um, lovely detail on here as well, as you've already seen. Strangely, this sprue kind of has bowed in the box um, if we sort of look at that from an angle you could sort of see how it's really sort of bowed it should be sort of a bit more bent that way uh, but i have looked at it and from what i can see it's just the sprue it's not any pieces of bowed so um you know it seems seems okay to me even though the sprue's bowed a bit um and we've got another sprue here so as you can see loads and loads of sprues with this kit a lot of plastic for your money and then they do go off and add a nice bit of photo etch, right? This is the cool thing about Ming. Well, they do like to add, not a gimmick bit of photo etch, but you know, there's a nice decent bit of photo etch, as you can see there, some sort of vents and all that kind of stuff, some chain bits as well, should set things off nicely, giving that nice little extra. We do get this vinyl um, pipe, which is for the auto cannons as well, which is kind of interesting. And then we have some decals, which we'll just have a quick, quick look at just here. If we just quickly open this up, all right? And as you can see, we've got all sorts of decals, all sorts of markings. There was a ton of markings with this kit, which you'll see in a bit. Instrument display panels were looking really sort of cool as a decal. You can see all the, the um, dials and everything should go really well with the clear um, instrument display panel to make it look like glass and everything, which is rather cool. Looking all nice from registry, and they should be good. So now let's take a look at the instructions. So with the instructions, you do get these nice color call out markings just here. Now you do get a, a hell of a lot now they do fold out which is not my particular favorite but we do fold out quite nicely um on this side we've got four markings loads and loads of markings not 100 percent sure on you know where all these markings come from if they're not all big on my russian stuff but we do have this was it the soviet celebration um of the 55th anniversary of the great october specialist revolution um nice sort of parade one there then we have a whole bunch of stuff going on here even um i do believe which one is it we've got the first chechen war version you know we've got three stage camos two stage camos we do have the german democratic republic version as well so we're not just talking Russian stuff here um, and then there's loads of other versions which I'm not sure where or where what they were used for or anything but loads of cool sort of choices of camo schemes going on um, and a nice one here which is the Soviet troops in Afghanistan 1988 so um, nice versions a nice array of different sort of markings you can do for this kit which is rather rather cool when they do do that it is nice to see a lot of versions then the instructions we do have let's bring you in a little bit closer we do have um sort of plain black and white you know sort of standard paper um and as we go through the instructions yes you know what it is a tank it's you know big blocks and you're sticking lots and lots and lots of detail around it so we'll just quickly skim through this um this is all your instructions you've got for the tracks so i'm just assuming it's not 100 percent clear that it is just a snap fit and there's no glued glue required so um 
Instruction could have been a little bit more clear, but I'm assuming that's the way they go. Then we have noise to see, internal detail for the driver's compartment, as we've already mentioned. Um, you don't see that very often, actually, that they kind of add internal detail, which is cool to see. You're going to see a lot of this, you know, A, B, C, D business going on, which is basically you pick what markings you want, and then you've got to sort of do whatever sort of variations that you need to do with, you know, drill this hole if you're doing say c and d in this case to put that piece on for you know c and d that kind of stuff you know you just kind of got to really sort of make sure you you've, you've picked your markings you want to do and then build it the way it tells you to do the configuration um, as you can see it's just lots of bits going on here and there um, just show you the photo etch uh, this one needs to be bent by the looks of it uh, then we have the the vinyl pipe, it wasn't very clear. You've really got, you've got to study these instructions a little bit because you're trying to work out where those these vinyl, the vinyl pipes go and these bits there. And you do actually see it here. It does say vinyl pipes if you look closely. And then it's kind of saying one and two, you know, one's 38 mil, two's 28 mil. And you kind of get there in the end, but you've got to study the instructions. So it does um, get you there in the end. Um, and then you will see on the next one just here we can have all this sort of these ammunition bays sort of all nicely open you can show them off and show the detail off so you can open this up a fair little bit but you do have obviously the actual panels themselves to stick them down and close it up so if you don't want to bother doing all that detail you can but you've got the option which is what i like to see so there you have it there is the shilka by ming again you know as always with ming models you know it's definitely a big thumbs up they do look like good kids they're fairly priced as well at about 45 to 50 pounds you get a lot of plastic you get photo etch and all this kind of goody stuff and it does look like a good kit with lots of nice markings to do so hopefully you've enjoyed that hopefully you're going to um, get one of those kits and get building and i'd love to see you do i'd love to build one myself but until next time my name is bob wardrin this is genesis models and i hope you've enjoyed